All right, guys, lesson seven. Here's some example problems for us today. I picked out a bunch of them that I'd like to do as a team. Starting with number one here at the top of the page. It says, use money manipulatives to answer this question for this problem. Ne Nevea, Nevea had 452 after she was paid 88 rent. How much does she have now? Okay, so we got our addition algorithm here. So let's get it stacked up. 462. Two dollars plus eighty-eight. Two plus eight is ten. Zero down, one up. Eight plus six is fourteen. Plus one more is fifteen. Carry the one. Four plus one is five. Don't forget your dollar sign. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Jump to number five. It says find the sum of fifty-four and two hundred forty-six. Now, sum is just a fancy word that says add these up. So this is your addition algorithm again. I like to put the three-digit number on top. 246 plus 54. Sum means add. So let's add those up. 6 plus 4 is 0, carry 1. 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 1 more is 10. 0 down, carry 1. And 2 plus 1 is 3. No dollar sign on this one. So my answer is 300, okay? Now, 9, 10, 11, 12, 34, four, all of them have this direction. It says find the seventh term in each counting sequence. Now, guys, I don't want to make this too easy, but this is really like saying first term times 7. 10 times 7 is 70. Oh, let's check. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The seventh term would be 70. 10 times 7 is 70. And so instead of writing all these terms out, I'm just going to go ahead and take the seventh term times the first term, and I'm going to get my 70. Some of you guys were catching on to this the other day on our Zoom call, and were pointing these little tricks out to me. The 10, 10 one, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well, why don't I just take 5 times 7 and get... Good job, 35. So 5 is what I'm starting with times the seventh term is 35. That's another way of doing it. Now, if you like the old-fashioned way, you can do it. 6, 12, 18, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, seventh term. 18 plus 6 would give me 24. 24 plus 6 would give me 30. 30 plus 6 would give me 36. And 36 plus 6 would give me 42, or 6 times the 7th term is 42. 12, 13, 14, 15 are just like that. Let's take a look at number 16. 16 down here at the bottom of the page says, compare. How can you answer the com comparison without adding? Well, what, you mean, what do you mean, how can I do this without adding? Well, if you look real clear, carefully, this one says 365, and this one says 365. So if I had a balance, and you were on one side, when you, and you had a 365-pound weight, and I was on this side, and I had 365-pound weight, it would be equal. So if we got rid of those two numbers, what do we really have left? Well, 366 and 365. And 366 is one more than 365. And so without even adding, we can say, hey, there's one more on this side just looking at the numbers. So for number 16, you'd write something like this. 365 plus 366, underline the 6, compared to 365 plus 365, underline the 5. I crossed the first two out because they're exactly the same. And now I'm comparing 366 to 365. 366 is greater than. So number 16 is greater than. All right, if you turn the page, i got a few more that I want to show you and give you some help with. 21, we've done this one a couple of times. Okay? We can count it to 24 by 2s or 3s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Yeah, by 3s. If you're following along on your chart, it's really easy. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Good. Can we get there by 4s? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Now, guys, maybe it would be even easier to start thinking about which one can you not. Because look at this one's an odd number. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 
35, 10, 15, 20, 25. We jump right over 24, so we know it's got to be the fives. The rule for fives is always ends with a zero or ends with a five, and 24 doesn't. So our answer for that one is B. Number 21 is B. All right, take a look at number 26. Jumping down to 26. It says, if 12 people are in line, Rosario, and forgive me if I butcher their names, was fifth. How many people were in front? How many people behind? This is our ordinal number from today. So remember, we've got to draw these people out. Rosario, 12 people, number 26. I'm going to do it with little circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And Rosario was fifth. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And she's fifth. So now how many people are in front of her? Well, that number would equal 4. And how many are behind? Count them with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which would make sense because 4 plus 7 is 11 plus her is 12. So 26, 4 in front, 7 behind. If I ever go too fast, remember, just pause the video. Number 27. If the 12th term in this counting sequence is odd, or same with me, odd, 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 odd. The 12th one's going to be odd. Number 27, obviously, is odd. 28. Five birds were perched on a branch. Could half of the birds fly away? Now, remember, we said half of... An odd number, you're going to give it the high yah, and the high yah works really good with candy bars, right? Two and a half candy bars for you, two and a half candy bars for me. The high yah works good with dollars. Two and a half dollars for you, two and a half dollars for me. But what about birds? Give that last bird the high yah, and you get the top half, and I get the bottom half, and is it going to fly away? So, no, if we're ever going to give something the high yah, and it's going to bleed, forget it. You can't do it. And so let's say for number 28, no, a half bird can't fly. No, a half bird can't fly. Now, if you want to be more mathematical, you could say you can't have Two and a half birds. Okay? And so I'm going to put a big old no in there and box it up. And my favorite problem, number 29 and 30. This time, we're going to work with pennies for dimes. Write a rule that describes how many number of pennies for any number of di di ugh, dimes. How to find pennies. Pennies is going to be more than dimes. So today you're multiplying. You're going to say dimes times, the difference between pennies and dimes is, sorry, I should have looked down, down here, 1 times what equals 10, 2 times what equals 20, 3 times what equals 30, dimes times 10 equals the number of pennies. Dimes times 10 equals pennies. And then it says, how many pennies are represented by 8 dimes? So now you're just going to substitute dimes times 10 equals pennies. I have 8 dimes, 8 times 10 equals my pennies. And 8 times 10 equals 80. Do I need a label? Yes, pennies. OK, guys? All right, I think we did about 10 of them for you. The other 20 is your assignment. We'll check you tomorrow.